7 foods to avoid for a healthy brain discover the worst ones. The brain controls all other systems, from learning to motor functions, and that is why having a healthy brain is essential for your health. However, your diet can directly influence your ability to make your brain function. You could have problems with depression, memory loss, or difficulty solving simple problems just because what you eat is interfering with brain function. Estimates predict that by 2030, at least 65 million people could suffer from Alzheimer's, but this is not something we have to accept as a given fact. Depending on what you eat, you can determine your future and the health of your brain. In this video, we will look at 7 foods together that harm your brain. If you like the video and want to help us continue creating interesting content, we kindly ask you to consider the idea of subscribing to our channel and making a donation to support us. Your support is precious to us and will allow us to continue growing and improving our channel. You can do it here below, through the appropriate buttons, subscribe, and, thanks. The first food I want to talk to you about is sugary drinks. I include all of them in this group, both carbonated drinks and sugary drinks such as fruit juices, as well as energy drinks or sports drinks. Excessive consumption of sugary drinks not only leads to an increase in your belly and an increase in abdominal fat, but also to the risk of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and consequently also negatively influences your brain. Studies speak clearly. Too high levels of sugar in the blood lead to dementia and Alzheimer's, even in young people aged 40 50ths, even in people who do not suffer from diabetes. One of the main and most harmful components for your body that is present in these substances is high fructose corn syrup. American companies and the American industry have built an empire on this corn syrup, which is a product that is then used both to feed animals, but also as a waste product to be included in drinks to sweeten them and increase their palatability. This corn syrup is composed of 55% fructose and 45% glucose. Fructose, which is naturally present in fruit but in fruit is always accompanied by fiber, when taken singly is the main cause of metabolic syndrome, a problem not only for sick people or overweight people or hospitalized people, but a very common problem, and you probably suffer from it too. It is today one of the most widespread alterations related to the daily diet. The excess of fructose overloads the liver. The liver can become altered and suffer from non-alcoholic cirrhosis. The increased insulin peaks make you deposit more and more fat, damaging your joints, your arteries, altering the cardiovascular system, and consequently also the brain. The second type of food that is very, very bad for your brain is refined carbohydrates. I am talking about pasta, bread, pizza, cookies, rusks, Foods that if taken in an adequate measure and if taken in their natural and whole grain version are good, but as we do today, where we eat them at breakfast, lunch, dinner, and even snacks, and they are all refined, they can really, really hurt you. The reason is that white bread and white flour, which is precisely the foundation, the main ingredient of bread, have a very high glycemic index and also a high glycemic load. They are both two parameters to evaluate foods, and both tell us a simple thing. Those who eat foods with a high glycemic index have an immediate impact on their ability to memorize things. This deficit is particularly seen in children. Just give a child, as they did in an experiment, a high glycemic index meal to greatly reduce their ability to memorize and retain the information they have just learned. I want to give you some data, numbers. A person who for 58% of the diet eats simple carbohydrates has a double, double risk of developing Alzheimer's compared to those who do not eat simple carbohydrates. The third group of foods that harm your brain are trans fats. These types of fats are a type of unsaturated fat that, moreover, are naturally present in some products such as dairy products and meat, but in which the quantities are so small that they are not at all harmful to your health. Where do we find trans fats? the ones that really hurt you, then. In all those industrial products in which hydrogenated vegetable fats are used, which have trans fats inside them, in margarine, in icing, in cakes, in snacks, in supermarket cakes, those already ready, or in pre-packaged cookies, you can find a large quantity of these fats. There are clear studies. 
Those who eat a lot of these fats have a brain that shrinks in size, memory loss, and risk developing dementia at a much younger age. As I said earlier, even at 40 50ths of a year old, the first signs of memory loss and dementia begin to appear in people who eat large quantities of trans fats. But it is not only the brain that suffers, obviously, the systemic inflammation of your body increases, your heart, your arteries can suffer from it. If on trans fats we have, therefore, clear ideas, definitive decisions, on saturated fats there are many alternating studies. Some studies say that they are bad, other studies say that they have no impact on your health. In this case, scientists give us an answer. Probably it is not so much the quantity of fat in itself that is bad, but the ratio between fats that, if unbalanced, can hurt you, as we said in other videos. There are many healthy fats, such as omega-3 fatty acids, present in nuts, flax seeds, or even in fish. In this case, having diets rich in these types of fats does not hurt at all, but is perfect, indeed, to balance healthy fats with less healthy fats and have a diet that can be rich in tasty substances, but that does not hurt, but rather does you good. The fourth type of food that is extremely harmful to your brain is highly processed foods. In this case, these foods have both components, trans fats on one side and sugars on the other. As we said earlier, both these components are bad. Imagine if they are put together. I am talking about chips, sweets, instant noodles, popcorn with added margarine or butter, ready-made sauces, or ready-made and finished meals to be simply put in the microwave. Industries combine simple sugars and trans fats to increase the taste, to make it a highly palatable food for you, and you will continue to eat it. These foods are very, very high in calories and have very, very few nutrients. The final result is that they will make you gain weight and increase visceral fat, and it is the latter that is extremely bad for your brain. A recent study on 250 volunteers showed that the more visceral fat you have, the more brain damage you will suffer. In another study, it was seen that there is a reduction in brain mass with the increase in metabolic syndrome. We also include processed meats in processed foods, those cold cuts that at the origin are healthy. It is not that the animal in itself is bad, but cold cuts, cold cuts, sausages go through an industrial process in which preservatives, colorants, a series of substances that are extremely harmful to the brain are added, in which there is a direct association between consumption and the quantity of consumption of these foods and brain capacity in itself. So, salami and cold cuts do not hurt if they were taken from the farmer or the farm in origin, but when they are processed and put on the shelves in supermarkets, and you buy them and eat them thinking they are healthy and natural, they actually bring with them a lot of substances that are better to avoid. If there is one thing these foods really do damage to, it is that they have a terrible ability to reduce the production of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, this very important molecule that allows the plasticity of your brain, the formation of new connections between one neuron and another. The more brain-derived neurotrophic factor you have, the easier it is for you to learn new things, become smarter, have the ability to overcome traumas and overcome difficulties in daily life. Processed foods influence the ability to produce brain-derived neurotrophic factor, and that is why you must absolutely avoid them in your diet. The fifth food that you may not know, but that hurts you, is aspartame. This is a substance that is now very often used as a sugar substitute. They no longer sell you the sugary drink, the classic drink, they sell you the zero sugar drink, in which, however, to give taste, they add aspartame. In aspartame, there is phenylalanine, a substance that has been seen to be able to cross the blood-brain barrier, which means that from the blood it can transfer to the brain, and within the brain influence your ability to produce certain neurotransmitters. You will understand perfectly that even if we do not go into details, if your brain no longer has the ability to produce certain neurotransmitters, it has fewer functions, less autonomy to apply itself, to improve itself, to perform those that are its functions. In a specific study, some people were tested for 8 days, giving them a large amount of aspartame, about 25 mg per kilo. In a specific study, some people were tested for 8 days, giving them a large amount of aspartame, about 25 mg per kilo. At the end of the study, after only 8 days, 
people were more irritable, more depressed, and with much less learning ability than the control group. In another study, it was shown that people who drink sweetened beverages have a higher risk of developing diabetes and dementia, although it should be said that in this study they did not specify the type of sweetener. Having said that, there is an important thing to say about aspartame. Fortunately, it is the large quantities that do harm. Fortunately, it is the exposure that really creates damage, and not so much the substance in itself. Under certain quantities, if for example, you only drink one can a day of a carbonated substance, then there are not too many risks, and aspartame remains safe, and that is why even at a legislative level, those drinks are still widespread, and are also sold and marketed. In general, what I advise you is to reduce to a minimum all carbonated or sweetened substances, keeping in mind that if you exaggerate, then yes, you could run into serious problems, especially for your brain. The sixth type of drink, now more and more widespread, is alcohol. Like aspartame, it always depends on the quantities. There is one thing to say, alcohol, red wine, is good. In reality, the studies are specific. Red wine is good in a person who drinks alcohol because in an asthmatic person, red wine does not do good, but it is better not to drink any alcoholic substances at all. But if you drink, you should know that excessive alcohol is very bad, and it is very easy to exceed without realizing it. Chronic alcohol consumption leads to a reduction in the brain, an increase in the risk of liver cirrhosis, serious metabolic changes, and an interruption of brain neurotransmitters, leading to early dementia. Alcoholism is also associated with a reduction in the assimilation of vitamin B1, which leads to a terrible brain disorder called Wernicke's encephalopathy. But the problem with alcohol is not only for alcoholics. Do not think that just because you only drink on Saturday nights, you only drink when you are in company, that you do not have any problems, that it is an occasional situation. The same negative effects are also found in people who drink excessively but occasionally. Drinking once a week on Saturday night that then becomes Friday, Saturday, that then becomes Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, has the same negative effects on your brain as a person who is alcoholic and drinks from morning to night. There are direct impacts on your emotions. There are direct impacts on your ability to recognize non-verbal language. It is thought that under the influence of alcohol, people have greater sensitivity to angry faces, and that is why we see every day on the streets that those who drink a lot are more likely to start a fight and create brawls. But there is one thing you absolutely must know. Alcohol directly influences your ability to enter a deep sleep, and if you do not enter a deep sleep, what you do is not learn anything about what you have done. There are exceptional studies that show you how drinking alcohol even just three days before an exam can influence your ability to retain what you have studied, to retain the information you read a few weeks earlier. For this reason, alcohol in the long run can be really deleterious. It has a direct impact on neurotransmitters, as we said earlier, and as can be seen evidently in alcoholics, but it also has an impact on your ability to fall asleep and have a deep sleep, and therefore on your health. This negative impact is even more evident in the fetus, in the child who is still developing, and in fact, I hope that by now everyone knows that alcohol in a pregnant woman is extremely harmful, but if there is a sector of the population in which this message has not yet arrived, it is precisely young adolescents. Today, more and more often, children and young people are approaching alcohol at an increasingly tender age, and I must say one thing, one thing really sad. This is because alcohol is often associated with energy drinks. This cocktail of stimulating substances on one side and alcohol ends up really damaging both the short-term memory, but also the long-term memory of the boy, but above all, it has the purpose of bringing children closer and closer to alcohol in an unconscious way. It starts with the carbonated drink, then moves on to the energy drink. The passage on the supermarket shelves from the carbonated drink to the energy drink ends up arriving at beer or alcohol without even realizing it. They have the same packaging, they have the same shape, they have the same colors, and they are proposed and served in the same way. I believe, therefore, that we have a direct responsibility today in the way we propose certain products, and in the way we are voluntarily bringing young people, children, closer to alcohol and alcoholic beverages, 
and they will pay the consequences, they will pay them above all. The seventh food that can hurt your brain is fish rich in mercury. Let's go slowly in these situations, it is exclusively related to quantity. There are some types of fish that have an excess of mercury, and mercury in excess in your body can hurt you, it can hurt brain functions, it can hurt the development of your fetus, so it is absolutely to be monitored, especially in a pregnant woman. Having said that, there are only some types of fish that have a much higher amount of mercury than what is found in the sea. The reason is that mercury settles in fat, and therefore large fish can deposit it up to a thousand times more than what is then found free at the level of water in the ocean. I am talking, for example, about tuna, swordfish, shark that is eaten perhaps in oriental countries. When we eat these foods, there can be a quantity of mercury that can enter our body. Does this mean that all the mercury that is in the fish is assimilated by the body, and we retain it all, and then it hurts us? No, fortunately, our body has the ability to process it, to eliminate it, for this reason, in itself, it is not necessary to exclude certain types of fish or be afraid of them, but know that if you eat them in excess, and with excess I mean every day or two times a day, and you go beyond those that are the maximum indications of two times a week, you could start suffering from brain problems, memory loss, cognitive function difficulties, because mercury is acting negatively on your neurotransmitters. Given that fish is rich in omega-3, given that fish has very healthy proteins, there are vitamins, there are minerals, there are also zinc, iron, and magnesium, it is not a thing to be eliminated, but perhaps start choosing blue fish, small-sized fish. If you are interested, I made a video exactly on the healthiest fish in the world, the small-sized one, the fresh one, the one you find on all American counters, and that also costs less. That type of fish has less mercury, is healthier, and you can favor it instead of large-sized fish. If, on the other hand, you are interested in knowing what is good for your brain, I advise you to watch a video that I made indicating all the things that are good for immediately improving your brain capacity and your intelligence. In summary, what is bad for your brain are sugary drinks, refined carbohydrates, trans fats, processed foods, aspartame, alcohol, and mercury in large-sized fish. For completeness, let's say it all. All these foods do not really hurt in themselves if eaten once in a while, but it is their excess, their daily consumption that can lead to big problems. Unfortunately, unfortunately, today too many people eat them every day. Unfortunately, today too often in foods these products are inserted to increase their palatability, to make you believe that you are eating healthy things when instead they are not. Be careful, pay attention, look around you, and make the right choices. Let us know about your practical experience regarding today's topic by writing it in the comments. And do not hesitate to ask questions, we will respond to the best of our ability. Do not forget to share your opinion with us and leave a comment. If you also leave a like, it would be great, subscribe so you don't miss the next video.